Hey guys, how's it going? This is a pretty exciting video for me because I've always wondered what's the difference between an IPS panel and a VA panel. Seems like on the internet, the general consensus is that IPS panels can produce a lot more color and VA panels can produce a lot deeper blacks. So I'm going to compare these two technologies side by side to see how well this holds up in the real world. Welcome back to another review from Reviews for Life. Let's begin. On the left, we have an IPS panel, the LG 27GL850. And on the right, we have a VA panel, the ViewSonic VX8268. The only main difference is that the ViewSonic is slightly bigger with a curve, while the LG is smaller and has a flat display. But before we get into the comparisons, I noticed something that's pretty interesting while I was color calibrating the displays. The results show that both displays were able to cover about the same amount of color in the sRGB space. In fact, technically, the VA panel was able to do 0.05% better. So when people say that IPS can produce more colors, what do they actually mean? Well, my guess is that they're probably talking about the Adobe RGB color space. This metric is able to generate about 50% more colors than sRGB. But unless you use a program that takes advantage of this, you actually won't see more colors. This is further backed up by some real world testing. Bright, well-lit scenes look identical between the two. Only when I'm comparing them side by side do I notice that the IPS colors look slightly darker. My guess here is because I was in mirror mode, Windows actually disabled my calibration profile. Since panel variation is so common, I don't think it's the fault of the technology. Now, one of the issues I've encountered was with the black smearing. This occurs when there's a black background and small details would often get lost. For example, in Hades, where there's a lot of dark environments, notice how the pillars darken when I move and recovers when I stop. After looking around, this seems to be a common issue for almost all VA panels and is a definite disadvantage to the technology. So how does this affect gameplay? Well, it is distracting and I can definitely see why a lot of people would return their monitors immediately after seeing this. Honestly, it's one of those things where you can either live with it or you can't. So how about fast paced games such as Call of Duty? Well, I gave it a try and honestly, it's not as bad as I originally thought. Since the white crosshair doesn't move away from the middle of the screen, aiming doesn't actually get affected. Even with areas with high contrast, it's really hard to recreate the black smearing during normal gameplay. One game I did have an issue with was actually Hearthstone. Sometimes the environment would shake so violently that any text on the tooltips would just become a blur. Let's take a closer look at that clip again. Notice the black smearing on the VA panel as the screen shakes but the IPS panel is perfectly fine. Again, it doesn't take away from the gameplay, but it is distracting. Let's move on to movies. The IPS panel looks slightly warmer than the VA, but other than that, I couldn't tell much difference. Even in dark scenes where I thought the VA would have the upper hand, it was still really hard to tell. Sometimes I did notice a little bit of black smearing, but I really had to look for it. And even then, it was really hard to catch. At that point, I was no longer enjoying the movie and was nitpicking instead. Let's take a deeper look at the black smearing and motion blur. For this, I opened up UFO test to compare the two monitors side by side. Turns out it's a lot harder than I thought to handhold the camera while keeping everything in focus but the VA panel definitely has a little more ghosting than the IPS. 
but none of these tests are good examples of black smearing. So I decided to bust open the code editor and write my own website. Essentially, I wanted to create the worst case scenario where you have a black background with white text. This way, we can drive the point home about how bad black smearing really is. And man, does it get bad. When scrolling, the text becomes illegible until you stop. The IPS panel doesn't have this issue and is the obvious winner here. What's interesting is that this isn't as noticeable when using a white or beige background. So during regular use, I barely notice it. One area I did notice the black smearing was during grade to grade transitions. There's a lot more going on with the VA panel compared to the IPS, which just shows the cursor as it is. The last thing to check is the viewing angles. And there's an obvious winner here. Even if you look top down so that you don't factor in the curve, the colors on the VA panel still look washed out. The only redeeming factor for the VA panel is that the blacks are really black. And this is easy to tell comparing them side by side. I was super surprised by these results because I always thought that VA panels had great viewing angles. Turns out I was wrong. So how do I summarize this? Well, both technologies have their advantages and disadvantages. With IPS, you get the better viewing angles, and with VA, you get the deeper blacks. But perhaps the biggest trade-off for VA is the black smearing. It's definitely one of those things where you can either live with it or you cannot. So how do you decide? Well, it comes down to what you want to do with your monitor. I would only recommend a VA panel if you do a lot of stuff with static content, such as web browsing, coding, or if you're looking for math help. For everything else, IPS is the only way to go. Personally, because I'm going to use this as a secondary monitor, I'm going to keep it around. If this review helped you, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.